ICFF and Want to Design Manhattan being the main design event in the US, we have to have a point of view. And we have a mission to educate, guide, share best practices, and give a voice to those who are responding best to the environmental challenges. We have this year amazing designers and manufacturers from independent small studios to large manufacturers who demonstrate that we can design, we can produce, distribute and live better. This morning's talk hosted by ICFF and Want to Design has a promising title, A Visionary Future at Any Scale. We have to think about healthy materials and how they benefit the human as well as the planet. It's not just one thing. And for me, sustainability and social justice and equity all fall under the same umbrella. But well is also about appreciating a view, seeing a view, feeling inspirational space around you. Placing nature, environment, and people at the center of the creation and production, moving from conversation to implementation of sustainable scenarios, that should be our common goal for the design industry. I have the pleasure to have a conversation with designer and futurist Dror Benchetrit. Welcome, Dror. Thank you so much. Can you speak a bit more on how Super Nature Labs came to be? Yeah, the world of urbanism needs to change. Meaning, over the next 30 to 40 years, we are scheduled to double the built environment. When we look at those images, you realize that we forgot something. You know, it's not just about having the ability to have access to some parks nearby. It's really about us living in harmony with nature. We need to look at the entire construction industry as one discipline. This is way above and beyond what we currently call sustainability. We want to push towards ecological harmony. Super Nature's biggest realization is that we don't need to choose anymore between living in density and living in harmony with nature. We have the capabilities of living with both. Nature is showing us that four and a half billion years of evolution doesn't build anything in boxes. So at the very, very, very core, when you start to realize that everything in nature is broken into cell formation. So that gives us a whole new vocabulary of form to work with. For us, it's clear that when we talk about communities of the future, we're not just talking about communities of people. We're talking about communities of life. So for us, the understanding that it's not just about designing with nature, it's actually designing like nature. I'm Simon Johns. I live in East Bolton, Quebec, which is about an hour and a half from Montreal. I make sculptural pieces of furniture. Some of them are limited edition. Others are one of a kind. And they're mostly influenced by the environment where I live, um, related to outcrops of stone and cliffs and other formations that dictate geometries that I try to interpret in my work. Um, I hope my work is sustainable in the sense that its value is hopefully uh, passed on to the next owner and I use hardwoods that are mostly from Canada and very local. We don't use any um, solvent based products and we try and keep it uh, as low impact as possible. The light that I see as I walk is full of texture and variation and um, I notice how it travels through the atmosphere, over leaves, and across water. And I find that when I get home, I really want to translate those qualities into the interior space. I'm really craving an unpredictability that makes space feel alive, like the crest of a wave right before it breaks, or the moment when you jump into a puddle. And so I've created a system of glass uh, networks um, that I assemble by hand that's the result of multiple rounds of prototyping. It's called the Row Collection, um, inspired by uh, the fish eggs that it resembles. Opiary is a biophilic design studio. Everything we do as our core principle is to bring people and nature together through design. We're showing our lines of furniture and feature walls that incorporate nature into them. The feeling we're going for is a sense of well-being, also mystery. Not all the spaces are filled in. There's some contradiction in our designs, which I think 
help it move. So much can be done to reinterpret and give new life into what is you're probably inheriting from a space. So um, it's very easy to look at at that stuff and get discouraged by it, but but taking a moment back and thinking about ways that you can thoughtfully incorporate it in is such a good opportunity. It's appreciated by your clients, it's appreciated by the environment, and um, ultimately pushes you as a designer to be creative. Sustainability makes sense if we really truly focus on circularity um, in the products. And uh, circularity means that we want to uh, reduce our carbon emission or hopefully, you know, just to hit the net zero, um, as well as um, have truly healthy material, healthy material for healthy living. So we want to know what they're made of. It doesn't get more sustainable than uh, the wool that JD Switzer works with because it started with my own sheep. It was about eight years ago, and uh, I began. Uh, wondering what I could do with the wool that was coming from my Wensleydales and um, I found a giant industrial felting machine on a wonderful association called Fibershed which is a community of local um, sheep and farmers and fiber enthusiasts and then I thought well, let's do something with this and we brought felting very close to home so most of our uh, wool is sourced within a hundred mile radius of our workshop where we're actively felting and designing the fabrics. We actively source material that comes from sustainable methods. We're Northern California based, so we really try to focus on an aesthetic that kind of represents the nature that we're surrounded by. So the reason we really chose to work with Jessica and Sebastopol is because she's Sonoma based and she sources all her material from sheep in Sonoma and Marin. Sector Design was formed uh, in 1995 by my mother, Tuula Yuselius. So we are a family business operating from Finland. We use only certified Finnish wood, sustainable. Sustainability for us starts with that we make products to last. We want these products to go from generation to generation. We handcraft our lamps and to this day we take them to about 85 countries around the world. The forest is very important for us, so the wood is very important for us. We need to take care of each other. We only use PEFC certified sustainable wood, for example, and we make sure that uh, to eliminate uh, unnecessary use of plastic and things. Amongst other things, we made investments to find alternatives to plastics. But also now we are compensating all our flights globally to 150%. Sustainability work in itself is not something that you do one day and then you're done. You have to keep going and I, I think we all have to keep going. The way we address sustainability with our work is looking back at the old ways of making, doing well-crafted pieces that people would want to buy and hold on to for a really long amount of time. We use a range of natural materials in our work, including solid wood, uh, stone, and so we really incorporate all of these different materials together to create a really finished and refined product. It's all about slow process, using natural materials, and just the, the essence of doing things by hand. My name is Bowen. Um, I'm a furniture designer and maker based in Brooklyn, New York. I create uh, furniture collections based on my personal experience. So I found this company, uh, they have been producing eco-friendly material uh, made from wasted mango. That's been a direction I like to personally develop more to incorporate eco-friendly material to high-end furniture design. We have a house of paint and wallpaper from the south of France. We don't use any chemical, it's actually the DNA of the company. We wanted actually this year to uh, launch a new product, uh, plaster, based on uh, a high concentration of resins and pigments, and uh, give us actually a real waterproofing. All the solvent ingredients has been prohibited uh, in the company. That's the difference we have with the competition. How has wellness always but I know for many of you it's always been a major part of what you do but how are you how are you incorporating that throughout all different types of projects so workplace or um, residential or hospitality 
I mean, we say wellness and health, it's body and mind. Uh, and clearly the aspects of quality of air and natural light, filtration systems, etc., are very important. But I think mental health is becoming so much uh, uh, a topic of awareness right now, especially when it comes to design. And us as designers, as being able to control people's well-being, mental health, by the environment that we create. One of the best and most important thing for our mental health is connection. And when I say connection, it's really connection to other people. It's connection to nature. It's connection between indoor and outdoor. Another conversation that we're having with our clients around sustainability is just overall well-being and feeling good in, in the environments that we're, we're creating. A lot of that comes down to our material choices, our color choices, but also the types of things that we're putting into a space, the spaces that we're creating, how people can kind of come together like this, this booth, um, places to kind of take a step back, refocus, and come back to, the, come back to your work environment. You know, I, a lot of people talk about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and I like to refer to it as dignity, equity, and inclusion. Um, in that we're focused on our own dignity and the dignity of others, but self-care is such a huge part of that. You can't pour from an empty cup. We can't take care of others until we're taking care of ourselves. And it's no longer, hopefully, being regarded as selfish. But when we are focusing on our communities, when we're focusing on health and safety, when we're focusing on the environment, we are focusing on one another. And so there's that, that equity of nature as well as equity of self.